Hello everyone and welcome to the latest installment of Real History. I am your host, history professor Jared Frederick, and I'm really excited that the movie trailer for Christopher Nolan's upcoming film Oppenheimer has just dropped. Uh, and as we are doing here more recently on Real History, I've been doing trailer reaction videos specifically to historic films. And I'm really looking forward to taking a look at this one. And then we'll get into a little bit of historical commentary afterwards. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Oppenheimer. Oh, and there's a rather ominous beginning. And I understand that Christopher Nolan recreated the, the nuclear blast without using CGI or very, very little of it. So that'll be quite the technical feat when we see it. And here we are out in the desert, in the deserts of New Mexico, I presume. Uh, Killian Murphy is perfectly cast for this in my mind. Uh, in fact, he's five years older than J. Robert Oppenheimer. Until they understand it. Wow, it, it looks like a science fiction film. And the, the trailer for Dunkirk, Nolan's previous World War II film, had that sort of same vibe. It was a historical film, but at first glance, you didn't necessarily know that it was a historical film. Theory will take you only so far. This looks incredible. The visuals of it are just stunning. Uh, and there it is, the so-called gadget. That's what the, the first bomb tested at the Alamogordo bomb range in New Mexico in July 1945. That is what it was called. Oh, and there we see the, the shot tower. The shot tower was a 100-foot tower that they dropped this first bomb from. And this was known as the Trinity Test Site. I'm really impressed with the production value thus far. Man, perfect casting. We aren't even really seeing any other major actors in all of this. And this is a star-studded movie. Wow. So this is just the teaser, and I presume that there will be a more in-depth one coming down the road. So as is the case with many movie trailers for Christopher Nolan films, it's rather cryptic. We don't get a sense of too much what is going to be unfolding in the film. And I think one of the big takeaways is that we learn from what, not what we saw, but what we didn't see. I'm really curious to get a better glimpse of actor Matt Damon, who will be portraying General Leslie Groves. And when you do a side-by-side -side photo comparison of the two guys, there's not a lot of, of physical similarity in their bearing. Uh, in any case, I think it will depend more upon Damon's ability to capture the persona of Leslie Groves. Leslie Groves was in the Army Corps of Engineers and he overlooked the military side of the Manhattan Project while Oppenheimer was a physicist who uh, handled more so the scientific elements, of course. The gadget, as it was known, was an, an implosion type bomb. And I'm a historian, not a physicist, and I'm not going to attempt to condense the science of all this into a relatively, relatively short period of time. However, what I often do in these videos is I offer some suggested reading. And there are many books on Oppenheimer, on the Manhattan Project, on the Trinity Test Site. But if you're looking for something that's rather condensed, easy to digest, and if you are a visual learner, I will actually recommend the graphic novel which is called Trinity, and it is by Jonathan Fettervorm. And this is just a really great visual breakdown as to how the Manhattan Project unfolded, everything that went into the creation of the bomb, the Trinity test site, and ultimately what it means for humanity. It's a good little one day or weekend read, and if you're a visual learner, and if you're watching this channel, I presume you very well may be, you can't go wrong with Trinity. And when we do an in-depth breakdown of this movie, perhaps a few months down the road, I'll offer some additional reading at that time. I also have a little bit of show and tell here as well. 
and this is a souvenir of Trinitite uh, and this is actually the the glazed over residue of the atomic blast site the Trinity test site in Alamogordo and uh, this is from a vendor that is known as the Atomic Rock Shop. Now the Trinity test site was bulldozed over in 1952 and people were prohibited from taking pieces of <laughs> the, the remnants of this blast. Um, but parts of this were procured by a scientist in the late 1940s, early 1950s before some of those limitations were put into place. And so I have here a little piece of rock actually from the Trinity test site in 1945. I passed this around in the classroom a few weeks ago and students were, well, blown away by it. Poor joke, maybe so. In any case, I'm really excited by this movie. Christopher Nolan's unique sense of cinematic artistry really was demonstrated to the utmost with the movie Dunkirk, and I have every expectation that he will probably do the same with this. I really enjoy his take on historical time periods, and we'll ultimately see what the end product looks like. So, Thank you for tuning in to this short episode of Real History. You can also see our in-depth analysis of Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk, a live full breakdown reaction video that you can find under the live video section right here on our channel. And of course, as always, we invite you to explore all of our other resources available via the links below. Above all else, we'd like to hear your input in the comment section about what you think and what your hopes and expectations for Oppenheimer are. We hope to see you next time on Real History. Until then, stay curious.